Our next objective in this section is to basically graph rational functions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take everything we've learned up to this point about rational functions and kind of put it together. So you can see here at the beginning it talks about graphs of rational functions. And we already looked at a couple. It says uh, rational functions that are not transformations uh, can be used by the following procedure. Now the last example we used were actually four transformations. So it's pretty easy if it's like that because all you have to do is move your function around or change it just a little bit using uh, what we know about A, B, C, and D to help us out. But if it doesn't look like that, and say you just have some, some function, uh, some polynomial P of X over some polynomial Q of X. And what we can do is first thing we'll test for symmetry. Because again, symmetry is going to help us out tremendously. So very similar, even odd function is going to be a little bit more difficult this time. So we may actually have to plug in some values and see what we're going to get. Uh, then we're going to find the y-intercept if there is one by plugging in f uh, or 0 into f. Find the x-intercepts by solving the equation. So basically what you can see here is what they have done is they've plugged the numerator, they've set the numerator equal to 0 to find those. So that's where your x-intercepts are going to be found. We're going to have to find our vertical asymptotes by setting our denominator equal to 0 and solving and then find the horizontal asymptotes by using the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Next we're going to plot at least one point between and beyond each x-intercept and vertical asymptote and use the information obtained between the points to uh, graph our function. So let's see if we can't look at an example. So as you can see, first thing we're going to try to do is we're going to try to determine if it's an even or odd function. Well this one's going to be a little bit uh, fun because as you can see our numerator is going to be neither and our denominator is going to be neither. Uh, this, is even, or this is odd and this is even, and this is odd and this is even. So anytime you have a mix like that, you're going to have no symmetry. And that's unfortunate because that helps us out when we're trying to graph. It basically allows us to find one point and it really is going to represent two. So next what we're going to do is we're going to test for our, uh, let's see, what was next on our list? Find the y-intercept. So we're going to just find f of zero. When you do this and you plug in 0, you'll get negative 1 over negative 1, which of course is equal to 1. So that's good. We at least get one ordered pair, which wasn't too hard to find. And then after we do that, what we're going to do is find the x-intercepts. So we're going to set our numerator equal to 0 and solve. While well, numerator in this problem is 2x minus 1. And hopefully through the math that you know, the only way you can make a fraction equal to 0 is if the numerator is equal to 0. So this will give us our intercept of 1 half comma 0, whereas the last one was the intercept uh, 0 comma 1. Whoops, looks like I changed my pin size. Hopefully that'll be a little bit better. All right, so now we know our y-intercept and our x-intercept. And as you can see back here with Bob, what he tells us to do next is find the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes. So let's see if we can do that. To find our vertical asymptotes, our vertical asymptotes we will find by setting our denominator equal to 0. So x minus 1 equal to 0. So we get x is equal to a positive 1. And then now we're going to find our horizontal asymptote and we're going to do that by looking at the degree of the numerator and denominator. The degree of our numerator is 1, the degree of our denominator is 1. Anytime it's the same, it's going to be the fraction of the leading coefficients. So now we have a good starting point about the points that we know. Uh, unfortunately, there is no symmetry, but right now we've got two points, and we have also have our asymptotes. So let's see if we can't use that knowledge to help us out. First thing we'll do is we'll go and plot our points. So we'll say... Uh, 0 comma 1 I believe is what it was and then the other one was 1 half comma 0. Two points not too bad they're pretty close together and then uh, vertical asymptote x is equal to 1. So I'm gonna go ahead and dash in my vertical asymptote x is equal to 1 so here's our vertical asymptote. Now what you should know is that as you approach a vertical asymptote your function will either go to positive infinity or negative infinity. So keep that in mind. And then we also have a horizontal asymptote y is equal to 2. So here's our horizontal asymptote. Now kind of the opposite of what we were doing, as, you as x's get larger and larger and larger, 
what's going to happen is you're going to approach um, a specific number from either the top or the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in some values and see if we can't come up with some other things. So I guess I should have written my function up there. Let's hope that I can somehow remember it. 2x minus 1 over x minus 1. Let's plug in some other values. So I'd really like to figure out maybe what uh, what negative 1 will give us, and then maybe even like negative 5, just to see if I can come up with what's the pattern of our function. So if you plug in negative 1, you'll get negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3, over, uh, plug it into our denominator, and you get negative 2. So when you simplify that, hopefully you'll see you get 1 and 1 half, or 1 and 1.5. So we'd be somewhere here. And like I said, we'll go ahead and plug in 5 and see what we get. I probably should have left myself more room. But we should get negative 11 over negative 6. When you divide those two things, uh, hopefully you'll see you're just going to be a little bit less than 2. So it's basically 1 and 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 and 5, 6. So hopefully the pattern that we're starting to see, as x gets larger and larger and larger, our uh, y values, our function values, are going to get closer and closer to 2. Because as x gets larger and larger and larger, your graph should approach a specific number. So the way we can represent that in terms of uh, arrow notation is that x, as x approaches negative infinity, so as x approaches negative infinity, what we should see is that the y values or the f of x values are going to get closer and closer to 2 from the values that are below 2. So we just say 2, a little negative 1 up there. And then we're going to plug in some other values. In fact, we can actually see a trend. So uh, what we're going to see now is what happens as we approach our vertical asymptote. So with your vertical asymptote, x is not going to approach infinity or negative infinity, but it's actually going to approach a specific number. And that specific number in this case is going to be 1. Okay, and this time we're approaching from the numbers that are less than 1, so we'll use a little negative sign up there. And we're going to try to figure out what happens. So as we approach our vertical asymptote, what's happening to our function? Well, hopefully you can see that your function is going to go down. It's only going to go to positive or negative infinity. And uh, yeah, you can already see the trend as we start. It's starting to go down, so it's going to continue along that path. So what's going to happen is our function value is going to approach negative infinity. And uh, at the, in the middle of your graph, uh, you will not cross your vertical asymptotes. Remember, those are the values that actually make it undefined. So make sure that you're aware of that. In fact, we can go back. If we know our vertical asymptote, x is equal to 1, it's easy for us to find our domain. And you can say your domain is basically all the numbers but 1, or from negative infinity to 1, and then from 1 to infinity. Looking back here, we're going to try to finish this up and see if we can't graph the rest of it. As you can see, we are missing some values over here, so I need to plug in some more x's to help me out, because I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to be. So I'll come over here and we'll plug in some number like 2. If you plug in 2, you'll get 4 minus 3, which or 4 minus 1, which is 3, and in the denominator you'll get 1. So if we plug in 2, we get a value of 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Right there. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and plug in 3. And then maybe I'll just mess around and plug in something like um, 8. So when I plug in 3, I'll get 6 minus 1 is 5 over and then 4. So I get a, basically 1 and 1 fourth. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, and 1 fourth. Maybe I did that wrong. Let's see. Uh, oh, I added instead of subtracted. Let me try that again. That bottom number is going to be different. Sorry about that. So it'll be 5 over, and then 3 minus 1 will give us 2. So it's really going to be 2 and 1 half, which makes a little bit more sense to me. And then lastly, we're going to see what 8 gives us. I'll put the answer somewhere over here. So 8 would be 16 minus 1 is 15, over 8 minus 1 is 7. So as you can see, we'll get a little bit more than 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2, and basically 1, 8. Okay, so again, we're looking for trends. So we're going to deal with the blue part to talk about our horizontal asymptote. So what happens as our uh, x gets really, really large? 
So we want to see what's happening to our function. So using our arrow notation. So we're basically looking, as you can see, our graph, as it gets really, really large, goes this way. Okay. And what's going to happen is it's going to approach the uh, x value of, I mean the y value of 2. But this time, unlike over here on our graph, we're actually approaching from above it. So we'll put a little plus sign up there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at what happens uh, when we approach our vertical asymptote. So right now, hopefully you can see, as you approach your vertical asymptote, your graph is either going to go up or it's going to go down. Hopefully you can see the pattern. We're starting to increase as we get closer and closer. Sorry for the human error there in my drawing of a line. Or a curve, I guess is a better way to say it. So this time what we're doing is we're approaching this x value of 1 from the numbers that are larger than that. So we'll put a little plus as an exponent. And let's see what's happening to our function. Our function is either going to positive or negative infinity. In this case, it's going up, so therefore positive infinity. So that's the graph of a rational function.